This is my friend Gina. She's getting married to this handsome Italian man. His name is Andre. They make a great couple. Both of them are absolutely hilarious and just a ton of fun. So I fully expect their wedding is going to be a blast. But here's the catch. They're getting married more than 4,000 miles away in a small town outside of Rome. Fortunately, Sarah and I love to travel. She actually studied abroad in Italy back in college, and I've always wanted to visit Rome in particular. And this would be our first international trip together, so I think this is our perfect excuse to plan an Italian vacation starting in Rome. Let's go. After 15 hours of traveling, Sarah and I finally made it to Rome bright and early on a Friday morning. We didn't want to waste any time. We hit the ground running, we're off to see St. Peter's Square and tour the Vatican Museums. I'm really excited to see the Sistine Chapel with my own eyes. Walking back to our Airbnb, we just toured the Vatican Museums. It was super cool. We did it immediately after landing from our eight hour flight from Montreal. So we came in hot. We're tired. We're actually hot. How are you feeling, Sarah? I'm going to survive. <laughs> We're going to survive. We took a few minutes to relax before meeting up for aperitivos with the bride and groom. We started off classy at a rooftop bar, but things quickly devolved into shenanigans from there. We probably stayed up way too late, but I think it's safe to say we had a great time. Not surprisingly, we got off to a slow start on day two, but our Airbnb was just blocks away from the Pantheon. We literally rolled out of bed and walked just a few hundred feet to find one of the most amazing pieces of architecture from the ancient Roman Empire. Fun fact, the Pantheon was converted into a Catholic church all the way back in 609 AD, which is why it's so well-preserved even after nearly 2,000 years. While you're in the neighborhood, stop by Alantico Vinayo for an authentic and delicious Italian sandwich. Just don't sit on these steps to eat your sandwich. It's considered a holy site, so that's a no-no. Next, we did some shopping and sightseeing while we waited for our time slot to tour the Colosseum and Roman Forum. big history buff and I love learning about ancient Rome. It's just incredible to me how this civilization from thousands of years ago still influences society today. Everything from engineering to art, architecture, and even the spread of Christianity. So this was an absolute must do for me during this trip. All right, we just left the Colosseum, which was absolutely incredible. Sarah, what'd you think? It was awesome. up seeing the Colosseum and the Forum. It was absolutely incredible. What's next, Sarah? On to Japan. 
bring on mine too. <laughs> Later that night, we met up with some friends for dinner and drinks, but it's going to be an early night for us because we got to get up early to see the famous Trevi Fountain before our train leaves in the morning. Because next, we're headed 40 miles north to Civita Castiana to make it to this wedding. Before we knew it, we were on a party bus driving down country roads, headed to the wedding venue, which was basically a castle. The skies were ominous and there was some rain, but the wedding ceremony was undeniably beautiful. It's something I'll always remember and I'm so glad we made the trip. Congratulations to the bride and groom and a sincere thank you to Gina and Andre. But now it's time to get the party started. loved our first three days in Italy. Rome was everything I hoped it would be, a perfect blend of the ancient and modern in the 21st century. But it's time for the next leg of our adventure. We're off the train and heading to Siena. Oh yeah. Woo! Join us for part two of this Italy travel vlog while we eat our way through Siena and Florence and explore the beautiful vineyards of Tuscany.